The last American space plane to complete a mission in orbit touched down at the Kennedy Space Center on July 21, 2011, when the space shuttle orbiter Atlantis came to a wheel stop at the end of the 4,572-meter-long runway. It marked the end of an era for NASA. But thanks to Sierra Nevada and its now legally separate Sierra Space offshoot, the era of the reusable space plane is not at an end. Based on a NASA concept from the 1990s designed to complement the shuttle, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has been refined into a state-of-the-art space plane with a carbon fiber body and advanced avionics capable of doing things other spacecraft cannot. So how will the Dream Chaser space plane succeed where the space shuttle failed? Let's find out everything about it in today's episode. In Las Vegas at the Consumer Electronics Show 2022, Sierra Space announced they are scaling their Dream Chaser to carry astronauts into low Earth orbit. While the Dream Chaser does look a lot like the Space Shuttle, its differences are why it could succeed where the shuttle failed. Both the Space Shuttle and Dream Chaser have been built to build space stations, but the Dream Chaser is smaller, lighter, and uses a different launch system and its re-entry is different. Let's look back at a little history on aeronautics. The first space plane was NASA's X-15. It was small, agile, launched in midair by a B-52, and its body was covered in Iconel X, a super alloy. And Connell X withstood the 1300 degree Fahrenheit that happened during hypersonic flight and re-entry. The original design of the space shuttle in 1970 was a very scaled up version of the X-15. They knew it would work because the X-15 was successful, but it had a problem. It was costly to build, especially since the space race was over. Budget cuts and lack of political will ended up changing the shuttle. First, the launch system was altered for a rocket, then more budget cuts led to a solid rocket booster launch system. Engineers warned that solid rocket boosters couldn't be turned off once they started. This was what caused the Challenger tragedy years later. The shuttle also got bigger and bigger. This forced engineers to extend the wings and the extended contact surface that heated up on re-entry. A tile protection system was designed to protect the shuttle, but the system was flawed. It caused a lot of problems and finally triggered the Columbia re-entry tragedy, killing another seven astronauts and canceling the era of space planes. However, the Dream Chaser is different. Firstly, it seems very small when compared to the shuttle, but honestly, its size is its strength, and it's actually its most important attribute. Whereas the single space shuttle launch was a $1.6 billion investment, a smaller space plane roughly a quarter the shuttle's size is thought to cost at least a quarter what the larger space plane would. Indeed, the space shuttle could carry as much as 65,000 pounds or 29,000 kilos of cargo into low Earth orbit. But in a time where Delta IVs, Ariane 5s, and Falcon Heavies do a lovely job of launching probes and satellites, there simply isn't much need for the proverbial space pickup truck, as the space shuttle ultimately became. The Dream Chaser's more modest payload of 11,000 pounds or 5,000 kilograms or 5 tons might not nearly be as impressive, but unlike the space shuttle, Sierra Space's prized space plane is designed to fly as a fleet of more than a measly six. Besides, it's agile. It can take on safe re-entry configuration. Its wing surface is nowhere near as big as the shuttle because it's not that heavy or not that big. It doesn't launch on rocket boosters. It launches on top of a standard rocket mounted like a capsule. And these are significant differences in aeronautics. Sierra Space says the Dream Chaser is a third generation space plane built on four decades of the shuttle legacy. The shuttle failed to make space travel safe and affordable, but it also flew 135 missions and 400 people to space, built the ISS, and repaired the Hubble. Like the shuttle, Dream Chaser will also make a new space station and carry astronauts to space on a space plane once again. Another important comparison that relates to the size of the spacecraft has to do with heat shields and the number of tiles. TPS tiles protect the vehicle from re-entry heat, Around 2,000 of these tiles will protect Dream Chaser from temps that could reach upwards of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit on entry 
while keeping the vehicle itself at only 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The white tiles reject more heat from the sun while on orbit, which helps keep the components within Dream Chasers cooler. In comparison, about 24,000 tiles were used on NASA's Space Shuttle's orbiters. Dream Chasers, about 30 feet long, are about one-fourth the total length of the Space Shuttle. Especially in order to keep the tiles on Dream Chaser, the engineers are using Room Temperature Vulcanizing, or RTV Silicone. RTV Silicone is able to withstand high temperatures, making it perfect for bonding the tile, and each tile is tested using a mechanism that pulls them off, which ensures the bond is sufficient. That helps avoid issues of tiles falling off, which happened early in the Space Shuttle program. And you may know when workers first tried to ferry Shuttle Columbia to the Kennedy Space Center in 1979 on the back of a 747, hundreds of TPS tiles tore from the ship during the initial stage of flight simply from air resistance and flow. Now, had that occurred on launch and not the ferry flight, Columbia and her two-person crew would likely have been doomed. As it was when Columbia launched STS-1 on April 12th of 1981, a few TPS tiles still came free during launch, but thankfully the missing tiles were from areas of the vehicle that could survive atmospheric re-entry without them. Clearly, SNC engineers have been able to update TPS tiles from what was used during NASA's shuttle program with more innovation, better technology, and utilizing lessons learned. They use more modern manufacturing techniques to increase strength and reduce cost. Another difference between the tiles is Dream Chaser tiles are about 10 inches by 10 inches. Those on the shuttle were 6 by 6. Dream Chaser also smaller in size, which means fewer tiles to replace in general. Dream Chaser tiles are also stronger and lighter weight than those used during the shuttle program, and they meet all the micrometeoroid orbital debris requirements. That's the MMOD, which ensures safe entry, descent, and runway landing for a crewed or cargo mission. Already, a founding group of three Dream Chaser orbiters is nearing completion, with several more undoubtedly on the way, and it should the first cargo and manned missions go smoothly. The maiden unmanned launch is currently scheduled around February of 2023 aboard a ULA Vulcan Centaur booster rocket, a novel two-stage heavy-lift launch vehicle developed to be one of the most cost-effective booster rockets in its classification. In due time, we'll see if the Dream Chaser approach to reusable space planes lives up to the expectation of the shuttle's chief architect, Dr. Maxime Faget, better than even his own brainchild. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.